What's going on everybody? Tax Zone Productions here, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to build your own DIY USB audio interface. So, without further talking, let's get into the video. Making a USB audio interface completely from scratch would be nearly impossible for a DIY build. That's why we're going to be using an already built high quality analog to digital converter and adding features to it so it can work with any XLR microphones. But before we start modifying this audio adapter from Audio-Technica, we need to first build an enclosure for the USB audio interface. The enclosure will be built from a plastic project box. I drilled four holes on the lid of the project box for the XLR ports, headphone ports, volume potentiometer, and a 12 volt switch for the phantom power. The first feature we're gonna add is a full 48 volt phantom power supply. This can be achieved by adding an LM2877S adjustable voltage step-up regulator to the 5V in order to get a steady 48V as the output. Be careful when adding the step-up voltage regulator as if you do it incorrectly, you can electrocute yourself. Also, don't touch any part of the regulator when plugged in and unplugged as well as the capacitor can still hold a dangerous high voltage. Be sure the voltage regulator is set to 48 volts before continuing to the next step. Following this schematic, two silicon diodes are added to the end of the 48 volt supply in order to prevent noise when phantom power is activated. An additional 50 volt 120 microfarad capacitor is added to the output of the diodes in order for further smoothing of the preamp. Be sure to use quality parts for the capacitors. Two 6.8 kilo ohm resistors are added before the 48 volt phantom power supply reach the pin 2 and 3 of the XLR cable in order to limit the current if there was a short circuit. Two Panasonic 22 microfarad bipolar capacitors are added to the mic's output for XLR pin 2 and 3 in order to prevent 48 volts from entering the digital to analog converter. The capacitance of 22 microfarad was chosen to give a negative 3 decibel frequency of 12 Hz. This is needed in order to provide a flat neutral frequency response. If you want to boost the lower frequency of your microphone, then you can use a lower capacitance. A bipolar electrolytic capacitor was used rather than a regular electrolytic because the polarity can go both ways and we want to prevent the likelihood of capacitor damage due to reverse polarity. The end of these leads will then need to be soldered to the male XLR cable and the 3.5mm jack that will go into the audio adapter. Be sure the phantom power switch is connected to the input 5V in order to save power when phantom power is turned off. The last step is to add a headphone jack to the device so the audio can be monitored with low latency. The headphone jack will be soldered to a 100 kilo ohm dual potentiometer like this. The other section should be soldered to the male and female ports of the 3.5mm headphone jack. Then, the headphone jack should be connected to the headphone port on the Audio-Technica audio adapter. Strip an OTG USB cable and expose the wires. The two data wires will be soldered directly from the OTG cable to a USB 2.0 cable. The power wires will be soldered directly to, but will have two extra wires out of the 5V and ground wire in order to connect it to the voltage step up regulator. Solder one pair of power and ground wire to the 12V switch so that the light will turn on when the USB is connected. I added glue to provide strain relief to the headphone jack. The last step is to cover the entire plastic enclosure with aluminum foil. Solder an extra wire from the ground of the USB cable and tape it to the foil. Be sure that the voltage booster and the phantom power circuit won't be shorted on the foil by adding tape to the back side of the PCB. You can now close the project box and ensure the button's metal casing is grounded as well. Plugging in the audio interface, it should display on your computer, both Mac and Windows, without needing to install any additional drivers. Adjust the gain of the microphone preamp by going into the sound settings. For low latency round trip monitoring, ensure the headphones are plugged in to the interface and that your settings on your DAW is set to very low bitrate. The interface will allow you to record high quality audio during field recordings or even home recordings. Now, I'm sure you guys are wondering how this audio interface sounds, so throughout this video, the audio portion has been recorded on my MXL870 mic at 48kHz. 
And that's it for this DIY build. I hope you enjoy. Tune in next week when I test this interface on different microphones such as the affordable BM800 and in numerous of other types of mics. I will also be comparing this $30 DIY interface to a $100 Studio Standard Focusrite Scarlett Solo 2nd generation interface. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.